afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. It is Saturday, November 18th, and you know what that means, and it is time for the High Risk Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Jeremy Pierce. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Once again, enjoying a wrestling show today, because yeah, we are on episode 152. Zero. I can't believe it's been 150 episodes. 150 episodes. We got a good show for you today. But first things first, you know, you can check me out on the socials. Charismatic Creations on Facebook and YouTube. Charismatic underscore Creations 52 on Instagram. And of course, the 215 on Twitter, Coffee and Patreon as well for all donations. Today's show, well, just a couple of hours, a little under 12 hours. We have full gear 2023 so we are going to go and make our predictions for the show but for now you know what's next so just go on and hit my music you know what it's time for and we are looking at and ranking the five best matches from full gear 2022 so we're going to start with number five chris jericho versus sammy guevara versus claudio castagnoli versus brian Danielson for the ring of honor world championship we know what it's saying for this was when ring of honor was brought back and you know it's old hat down to say it shouldn't be a part of AEW, but it just worked and i understand it should be separate but at this time we needed to get names and bring the recognition back and chris jericho at this point was the ring of honor world champion having defeated claudio castagnoli and he was defended against his his uh, protege, Sammy Guevara, and two other former champions, in Claudio and Brian Dance. And this was just a really, really good match. It was had great, great talent. And it was no surprise that these two, these four, I'm sorry, put on just a really banger of a match with big time near falls and false finishes. But Jericho was able to retain and then go on putting the belt on the line against Claudio, against Dance, and against Dalton Castle, and against Bandito. Number four, Luchasaurus versus Jungle Boy in a steel cage match. Luchasaurus had just turned heel, aligning himself with Christian Cage, becoming his right hand of destruction, as Christian so politely puts it. But um, this was this was kind of the blow off to their feud, and it felt like an afterthought at times. But the cage match was such a standout, was such a, a an awesome match that you got to recognize it. Um, AEW rarely uses the steel cage stipulation, so when they do use it, it becomes something special. It becomes something real, and it's and it's meaningful. And this had a high, high level of violence. And Luchasaurus had many opportunities to win, but he could not capitalize and close. Jungle Boy won after hitting an elbow drop off the cage through a table and locking in the snare trap on Luchasaurus. Number two, MJF versus John Moxley for the AEW World Championship. Now, this is where it all kind of really started with MJF's reign. Remember, he won the championship last year at Full Gear. And this was their, their second match between um, MJF and John Moxley. With the first taking place at All Out 2020. And this was just this was good. This was this was this was solid. But you really forget some of the booking choices that were that were here. This was great as being booked as the main event. Even though I don't think it was the best match on the card. But the real booking nonsense came when William Regal turned on John Moxley, costing him the world championship and ending himself and removing himself from the Blackpool Combat Club. William Regal will later go back to the WWE. But this is where it all started with MJF. And this was good. And we forget just how good of a professional wrestler that MJ f is number two jamie hater versus tony storm for the aew women's world championship this was my favorite match of the card um tony storm had been a godsend and she was finally getting recognized as the true champion after thunder rose's injury had to she had to take herself out and relinquish the championship but tony storm carried that championship and then her and jamie hitter hater two of the heaviest hitters in the women's division in aew put on just a banger 
of a match. Jamie Hayter had all the steam, all the energy, all the momentum, and she was over. She was super, super over. And even though I wanted Tony Storm to get a longer reign, you had to pull the trigger and put the championship on Jamie Hayter. This will go down as one of the best matches in AEW women's history. And number one, the Elite versus the Death Triangle. Match one of their best of seven series for the AEW Trios Championships. Um, following the suspensions, the Elite had come back and the Death Triangle were the new Trios Champions. And the Elite never really got a chance to defend, defend themselves in... They were quote unquote being erased from AEW history. Those were the promos. So we got this banger of a match because it's the Elite, it's the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega. It's the Death Triangle. Pac, Penta, and Ray Phoenix. And these dudes delivered, delivered, and delivered. And the shocking thing wasn't that the Death Triangle won, it was the fact that Ray Phoenix cheated using the screwdriver. And he would cheat a few more times to retain these championships. But. This was a banger of a match and just an amazing piece of work from these six men. We'll be right back. Our superstars one J White, the former New Japan star, New Japan uh, world champ. Uh, this is the main event tonight facing J facing MJF for the AEW World Championship and this has been very much intriguing so for many that don't know Jay White he is a star and worked his way up to the top of the business the man as he says has sold out Madison Square Garden and now he has this chance to prove himself He's great on the mic, great in the ring, has gone and gone in with the best of the best and the leader of Bullet Club, Club Go, the Bang Bang Gang, has something to prove. He's going up against a homegrown talent, a homegrown star in MGF, and he has been a thorn in MGF's side. So the question is, how strong will JY look in this match and how strong will he look coming out of this match because win or lose Jay White needs to look strong coming out of this match he is going to be a mainstay in AEW and he has to prove that but also the company has to prove that he's worth taking a shot because remember you're only as good as you are booked Right, full gear 2023. I was about to say 2022. 2023 is upon us. It is on the horizon. And um it looks good. It it looks good. But first things first, we gotta look at last year's card. How did that pan out? So we have three matches on the pre-show. Uh we had a 10-man tag match with the best friends. The team of Chuck Taylor, Trent Beretta, Dan Housen, Orange Cassidy, and Rocky Romero defeating The Factory. Aaron Car Aaron Solo, Cole Carter, Lee Johnson, Nick Camarado, and QT Marshall. This was fine. It was actually a really solid match. Then we had an AEW World Title Eliminator match as Ricky Starks defeated Brian Cage once again. And we had, in the main event of the Zero Hour, Eddie Kingston taking on June Akiyama. And I remember this specifically for Eddie Kingston cutting a brilliant promo after the match saying, you know, F MJF. But it was good. It was, it was, it was, it was good. Next up, on the main card, we had Jack Perry defeating Luchasaurus in a steel cage match in a fantastic match. We had match one of the best of seven series for the trios titles with the Death Triangle as our defending champions taking on the Elite awesome match awesome awesome match we had a tbs championship match with jade cargo defending against nyla rose jade retained their ring of honor championship match four-way dance with chris jericho retaining over brian Daniels and claudio castagnoli and sammy Guevara. a singles match as soraya in her first match back in a very long time defeated soraya 
We uh, had a three-way match for the TNT Championship as Samoa Joe defeated Wardlow and Powerhouse Hobbs. Um, Wardlow was the champion here, but this was all about big, meaty men slapping man meat. We had a random no DQ tag match as Darby Allen and Sting defeated Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. We had a women's world championship match as Jamie Hayter defeated Tony Storm to win the championship. We had a world tag team title match as the acclaimed retained against Swerve and our glory. This is memorable for Keith Lee not turning heel and not joining Swerve on the dark side. And the main event we had the AEW World Championship match as John Moxley defended and lost against MJF after William Regal turned heel. So it was good. And for tonight, um, uh, Tony Khan is, is saying he signed somebody major and someone that's respected in the industry. Who could it be? That's the real question. So I've narrowed it down to four people Mercedes Mer- Monet, Will Ospreay, Dolph Ziggler, and Julia. Now, mind you, I think all four of these people will end up signing with AEW. Um, especially Mercedes Monet, but I think the major signing is Will Ospreay, so he can be in the Continental Classic, and they can build that up to him uh, winning the championship at all in next year. So I'm going to go with Will Ospreay as the major signing. But on to the main card, well, the match card. So on, we have three matches on Zero Hour. First up, made last night on I believe Collision, Claudio Castagnoli versus Buddy. Matthews, listen, the House of Black has been wrecking everybody's shit, and Claudio was not about that life. Um, this is gonna be a good match. Oh my god, this is gonna be really, really good. This this is a low-key sleeper to steal the show. It just is, but I'm going to take um well Buddy Matthews getting the W last night. I'm gonna take Claudio winning this match. Next up we have this uh Ring of Honor World Championship as Eddie Kingston def- is defending against Jay Lethal. Eddie just got the belt back. He's not losing this. This is gonna be a good match. Um, there's going to be shenanigans because it's Jay Lethal, it's Jeff Jarrett. There are always going to be shenanigans. So expect Eddie Kingston to win there. And the final match on Zero Hour will be MJF, who finally has a partner in Samoa Joe, defending the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships against the Guns. Now, part of me wants the Guns to win. Um, but to prolong the story with MJF and Adam Cole, MJF and Samoa Joe are going to retain. And the question is, will the devil make the make an appearance? I do think the devil will make an appearance at the main event. On to the main card. We have a four-way ladder match for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. As it will be Ricky Starks and Big Bill, our champions, defending against FTR, La Faction Ignoble, and the Kings of the Black Throne. This is going to be a banger of a match. Uh, ladder matches are just usually really good and really fun. Um, this is going to be Ricky Sexy Biggs Bill, really first big title defense. So I'm, I'm picking them to retain, but everybody's going to come out here smelling like roses. Malachi Black and Buddy Matt and, um, and uh, Brody King of this match is going to be crazy. It's going to be a crazy spot, and it's going to be a crazy spot with um, LFI. There's a couple big dudes in this match. You got Big Bill. You got Preston Vance, you got Roosh, you got Brody King. Those are some big dudes. Um, But take Ricky and Big Bill to win this match. Next up, we have Chris Statlander defending the TBS Championship against Julia Hart and Sky Blue. Um, this, This is going to be great. People say the AEW doesn't have any stories, and there's been a really, really good story told here. Julia Hart, part of the House of Black, spat her mist into Julia, uh, Sky Blue's face, and Sky Blue has been slowly changing, going to the dark side. Julia Hart also spat into Willow Nightingale's face, but Willow is so positive and so good that she can't be overcome by that. Um... The biggest swerve of this match would be if Willow Nightingale turned heel, but she's not going to turn heel. So the question is, can Chris Statlander overcome the odds? Can Chris Statlander retain the championship? And she's been a fighting champion. Um, I do think Chris is going to retain. And ultimately, I do think Julia Hart's going to join Sky Blue. And the House of Black will have one brand new 
member and Julia Hart and Sky Blue can be a tag team which I kind of hope I don't know how much I'm going to keep asking for TNA and AEW to do like a talent deal with the women so they can use the tag team championships but this is going to be good I think Chris Statler is going to do a lot of the heavy lifting here but that doesn't that doesn't want discourage Julia Hart and, and Sky Blue they're 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 good and they're going to put in that work but I just I, I think Chris is going to win here I'm um, gonna hold the championship for just that much longer next time we have the Young Bucks versus the Golden Jets Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega um this is another match that has some good good story so the Young Bucks want to know why one of their closest and best friends Kenny Omega is teaming up with Chris Jericho never forget Chris Jericho beat the holy hell out of the young bucks dad and they want to know what's yo kenny you you don't have our back but you got this dude's back and jericho was like listen i i own up to the stuff i did i don't i don't apologize for it but we we meaning he and kenny have some issues with someone else and this is a partnership out of convenience which the young bucks don't like and there are two things on the line if the young bucks win kenny and omega have to break up but if Kenny, I'm Kenny Omega, Kenny and Jericho have to break up. But if Kenny and Jericho win, they get the Young Bucks tag team title shot. This, I don't think there's going to be a true winner here. I think this is going to end in like a double DQ or a count out or something. Because the Young Bucks shouldn't lose that tag team title shot. And the and Kenny and Omega shouldn't break up because they're not done with Don Callis. Even though they did win the match. So. This is going to be um, weird in so many ways. But if you put a gun to my head, I'm going to take the Golden Jets to win. Next up, we have probably the match on the card that has the most story. Hangman Page and Swerve Strickland in a Texas death match. Now, this started because Swerve just said, listen, it's not personal. Hangman, I'm coming for your spot. You don't appreciate your spot. I want your spots. And that's fine. He never made it personal. Hangman made it personal by getting into Swerve's business and costing him matches. He caused Swerve a shot at the TNT Championship. So, Swerve made it even more personal by going to Hangman's house. And now it's just on. And, and Hangman has been bringing the smoke every chance he gets. This is going to be fun. Hangman rarely loses Texas death matches. Um, and Swerve won the first match at. Uh, I don't remember the pay per view that we had in Seattle. Sorry. But Swerve won that match. Swerve won that match. And I expect him to not win this match. It, it happens. Um. And that's okay. So I think this is going this feud is going to continue and I think Swerve ultimately will win this feud. But this match is going to be amazing. This match is expected to be the best match on the card. Um Yeah. My sleeper match on the card is Sokaro Shida versus Tony Storm for the AEW Women's World Championship. Harkar Har Shida is the champion defending against Tony Storm. And now with the introduction of Mariah May. The question is, does Sheeta have enough backup to retain? Does Sheeta have enough strength to retain? Because I can ultimately see Mariah May costing Sheeta the championship. Um, Tony has been absolutely brilliant in her new timeless Tony Storm gimmick with the black and white and Luther as her butler. Um, this is going to be good. Sheeta just got the championship back. And my money says put put it on Tony to win. But Tony's gimmick only works when she's losing. She's losing her damn mind. So I'm going to put this in as a W for Hikaru Shida. Next up, we have Adam Copeland, Sting, and Darby Allen taking on Christian Cage, Nick Wayne, and Luchasaurus. I'm expecting this to become a no DQ match so Sting can just do his crazy stuff. Uh, I'm going to keep this very, very simple. Just beef between Christian and Adam Copeland. There's beef between... Christian, Nick Wayne versus Darby Allen. All the beef is with Christian. Sting's just here because he's Dar Darby's surrogate dad. 
Um, this is going to be good, but I highly expect Adam Copeland's thing and Darby to win because Adam Copeland's not going to lose his first pay per view match. He's just not. Um, but this feud will continue on it is going to start with the faces winning so take adam copeland sting and darby island the winners we also build up to sting's retirement match next up we have orange cassidy defending the international championship against john moxley this is round two i believe and the story here is cassidy doesn't feel whole he doesn't feel right unless he defeats john moxley and that's what he's going for he has to defeat Mox. Mox is a tough cookie to crack. And the only reason Mox lost the international championship because he got hurt in his match. And Orange Cassidy got it back. This is going to be good. I expect this to be a bloodbath. Even worse than the Texas death match. But the question is who's winning here? Can Mox suffer a loss? Can Cassidy continue his streak? I think storyline wise, you've got to go with Moxley to win to start showing the downfall and then building Orange Cassidy back up. So take John Moxley to win the International Championship. And lastly, our main event, MJF versus Jay White for the AEW World Championship. MJF is our champion defending. And this story has been going on for the better part of almost two months now. And the kicker is the devil and his crew who is the devil will they get involved will the lights go out this is going to be good because mjf and jay white always rise to the occasion period so now we're asking ourselves who's coming out the champion mjf is already the longest reigning champion in AEW history defeating kenny omega streak and you know mjf won the championship at last year's full gear but there's something about jay white there's something about Jay White. Can he ultimately suffer a loss here? Can he walk away the loser here? After everything he's done, can he win? And more importantly, like I said before, the devil. Will the devil show himself? Yes. Will the devil reveal himself? That's the real question. This is intriguing. Um, and remember, MJF has so many people coming for him. Wardlow, Joe, Jay White, the devil, at some point, Roderick Strong, Adam Cole. So I'm going to take MJF to win and retain. And we get some further push on the devil storyline. So one more time, my predicted winners, Claudio Castanoli over Buddy Matthews, Eddie Kingston over Jay Lethal, MJF and Samoa Joe over the guns, Ricky Starks and Big Bill to retain, Chris Statlander to retain, the Golden Jets to defeat the Young Bucks, Adam Page to defeat Swerve Strickland, her Carl Sheeta to retain, Adam Copeland Edge, I'm um, Adam Copeland Edge, yeah, Sting and Darby Allen to defeat Christian Cage, Nick Wayne, and Luchasaurus, John Moxley to defeat Orange Cassidy, and MJF to retain over Jay White. Our next pay per view for AEW will be Worlds and and the start of the Continental classic which is their version of the g1 but that is our show thank you thank you all for listening thank you thank you all for watching next week's show we'll be previewing survivor series 2023 war games it's going to get real don't forget to check out the socials charismatic creations on facebook and youtube charismatic underscore creations 52 on instagram the 215 on twitter coffee patreon and of course as always gg dolan willow nightingale chris statlander Isla Dawn and Bailey. Holla at your boy. Peace.